brace yourself. You're about to hear one of the most unusual sounds ever. It's come from space, and it's the sound of two black holes colliding. But first things first. Our ears are designed in a special way, which helps us translate sound waves. But these sound waves become mute once the medium they're traveling through comes to an end. It happens when, for example, the atmosphere of Earth gives way to the vastness and emptiness of the cosmos. At the same time, there are some sound waves that can move even through a vacuum. And we can translate these vacuum-friendly waves into sounds our human ears can hear. That's kind of like radio transmissions work. Over the past few decades, people have sent quite many satellites to the far reaches of the solar system and even beyond. These spacecraft are equipped with sensors designed to hear such things as radio and plasma waves flowing freely through interplanetary space. These instruments are crucial for research and communication reasons. An additional bonus is that now we can finally hear different kinds of space waves as audible sounds. The results are often ear-splitting sounds, and sometimes audios are downright scary. Usually, when two black holes collide, they don't produce a sound. And still, thanks to modern technologies, we can now listen to this terrifying cosmic event. Do you hear it? This chirping sound is the sound that two black holes produced while slamming into each other around a billion light years away from our planet. Interestingly, the tone of the sound rises when the holes spiral closer to each other and stops abruptly when they eventually merge. Now, do you hear that long, low buildup? It means that the merger is quite slow, more sedate, and the black holes taking part in this event are relatively lightweight. A more abrupt chirp is a sign of a fast merger, where the black holes are rather large. For example, the pair that produced this sound combined and created one black hole more than 80 times the mass of the sun. Since each of these black holes weighed as much as several stars, they were hefty enough to produce waves while passing through space. I mean gravitational waves. They are undulations in the fabric of space-time, fanning outward at the speed of light. You can probably compare them to the ripples that appear on the surface of a pond after you throw a rock in the water. Naturally, the sound of black holes colliding isn't the only unusual noise recorded by our equipment. NASA's Juno probe passes by Jupiter every few weeks at a speed of up to 130 miles per hour and plows through all kinds of invisible fields in the process. And one of the most powerful signals it has recorded is Jupiter's bow shock. That's the point where the planet's magnetic field pushes against the incoming wind of solar particles. The sound produced during this standoff sounds similar to a sonic boom. Or this sound. It was produced by the Stardust space probe when it was passing through the dust left by Comet Temple 1. In the process, debris hit the body of the spacecraft. It sounded as if some creature was rapping at the window or hurrying across a hard floor. Let's have a look at NASA's nuclear-powered Cassini spaceship. It spent 13 years exploring gas giant Saturn and its numerous potentially habitable moons. This mysterious and a bit spooky sound is actually radio waves emitted by the massive planet. Such waves are caused by a phenomenon which is similar to the one producing auroras on Earth. Speaking of our own planet, it's surrounded by plasma. It consists of hot, ionized particles generated by sunlight. They're constantly slamming into Earth's atmosphere. NASA's polar mission, which was launched a few decades ago, managed to record this breath-like hiss. That's what plasma orbiting our planet sounds like. As for these weird sounds, NASA doesn't say which space probe recorded them, but they're coming from Jupiter's largest moon, Ganymede. It could have been the Galileo spacecraft, which orbited the system for around eight years. But it probably doesn't matter so much. Just listen to this creepy noise that sounds like screams trying to break through from some hidden place.
The ground shakes and you hear a loud cracking sound. Oh no! The dome is failing! Everyone runs to their skate pods to evacuate. People are pushing and shoving. The Earth-like atmosphere in the dome is going to be compromised and you'll be exposed to the thin elements on the surface of Mars. Everyone rushes to put their helmets on. The crack is getting bigger by the second and people are panicking, trying to get on the escape shuttles as quickly as possible. In the chaos, they all jam into the wrong ships and there isn't any room for you. Red warning lights begin to flash in the dome and a voice rings out, telling everyone to put their helmets on. The Martian atmosphere is only minutes away from rushing in, and humans won't be able to breathe otherwise. This is just your luck. You only just arrived on Mars. As the ships zoom off into the distance, you wonder what you should do. You call out for help, but no one answers. Suddenly, a robot guide rolls up behind you, and you hear a faint noise coming from its speakers. It says, no one can hear you because the atmosphere on Mars is so much less dense than on Earth. It also has a lot of carbon dioxide, which absorbs sound waves. Even if a loud concert was happening just 30 feet away, it would sound like it was miles away. Would you like me to assist you with anything? You ask it for help, and it shows you a 3D layout of the entire dome. You can see a few other shuttle stations, so you decide to aim for them. Unfortunately, you're going to need to get to the opposite side of the dome to reach another shuttle station. Just as you begin to panic and wonder how you could get there, the robot transforms into a bike and tells you to hop on. You get in and cruise through the city, looking at all the empty buildings and streets. The crack is getting even bigger, and tiny pieces of the dome begin to fall from above, like snow. When you arrive at the other station, the last few people are boarding the only shuttle. You chase after them, desperately trying to get their attention. As you ding the bell on your bike, though, it barely makes any noise at all. Their ship pulls away before they can notice you. You ask why sounds aren't working, and the robot explains that you can barely hear high-pitched noises on Mars. The carbon dioxide makes high-pitched noises, like bells and chirping birds, almost impossible to hear. If only you were still on Earth, they might have noticed you. The robot tells you that there's one last chance to escape. He transforms into a tiny spaceship. You get in, and he flies through the crack in the dome out into space. It's going so fast that you should be back on Earth before long. Just as you're starting to relax and enjoy the sights of space, you see a red light flashing on the robot. You ask it what's wrong, but you get no response. Suddenly, you realize that you can't hear anything in space. Sound travels in waves, and it needs something to move through, like air or water. Space is a vacuum with no air, so you can't hear any sounds at all. The spaceship suddenly changes direction and blasts off away from Earth. You try to steer the robot in the right direction, but you can't figure out how to get its attention. The ship charts a flight all the way to Venus. As you get closer, the turbulence kicks in. Venus has winds faster than any tornado on Earth. You keep getting swept away, trying to find a safe space to land in. The robot manages to keep a steady course, despite the wind throwing it all over the place. You can already feel the heat through all the layers. Finally, the robot spots a small cave in the distance and attempts to land there. As soon as the robot touches ground, it morphs into a spacesuit you can wear, so you're safe in the extreme environment. Today's forecast in Venus? Heat. Extremely boiling temperatures all day and night. Expect clouds of sulfuric acid and gale force winds. The atmosphere is mainly made up of carbon dioxide, so you can expect your voice to drop deeper too because of the planet's dense atmosphere. It's only the second planet closest to the sun, but it's actually the hottest. Its atmosphere traps the heat from the sun and keeps it around the planet. It's actually so hot on Venus that it could melt lead. If you were cruising by with the spaceship, the whole thing would melt in a matter of minutes. Luckily, you have this indestructible robot armor. You try to ask the robot how to get back, and your voice sounds crazy. Your vocal cords vibrate slower here than on Earth, which makes the pitch lower. But at the same time, the speed of sound on Venus is a lot faster, making it more squeaky. Then, the high carbon dioxide content in the air creates a weird effect that tricks your brain into thinking that the sound source is small. Overall, you sound something like a cartoon duck. You look out across the horizon and see many hills and mountains scattered across the plain. But the robot tells you that many of these are volcanoes. Venus actually has more volcanoes than any other planet in the solar system. 
scientists discover more than 1,600 only on the surface, which could mean there are even more than that still undiscovered. Yeah, maybe being here all day isn't such a good idea. And not just because of the heat. A single day on Venus lasts 243 Earth days. In fact, a day on Venus is longer than a year, because it only takes 225 days for it to complete a rotation around the Sun. It's hard to understand each other, but you eventually manage. The robot tells you that it just got lost, and that you'll be back on Earth in no time. While walking around the cave, you realize that you're actually inside a volcano. You tell the robot to hurry up and get you back home before it erupts. It's clearly not very good at navigating space, though, because it's not long before you end up somewhere else. You're now on Titan, Saturn's largest moon. The moon is so large that it's even bigger than Mercury, the planet closest to the sun. The spaceship arrives in the atmosphere, which feels and behaves similar to Earth's. The only noticeable difference is the orangey haze hanging in the air, which makes it a lot more difficult to see. As you descend towards the moon, the robot detects signs of cyanide gas all over the surface and fluffy clouds made out of iced methane. You land on a soft spot and set about trying to get the robot to take you back to the right place. At least this time, you're not sweating. The robot transforms again and begins to scan the surroundings. The atmosphere is around 60% thicker than on Earth. Walking around feels like you're wading through maple syrup. There is a really high nitrogen content in the air, so things sound surprisingly similar to how they do on Earth. You tell the robot you really want to get home now, but it comes out as a loud, raspy shout. This is because Titan has more nitrogen than Earth, and because sound travels a bit slower. Luckily, you can still understand each other here. The robot tells you that it needs to absorb a bit more energy from its solar panels before taking off. So you have a look around. This moon is one of the only things in the solar system that has fixed bodies of liquid like rivers, lakes, and seas on its surface. You can understand why the robot got lost now, given how similar Titan is to Earth. Titan even has liquid cycles, with rain, evaporation, and condensation. This isn't water, like back on Earth, though. The main liquid here is methane. Scientists think that there may be volcanic activity, but instead of molten hot lava spewing out, it's water. Other planets, like Mars, have ice on the peaks of their mountains and evidence of water beneath the surface. But nothing is as close to Earth as Titan. Some scientists believe that this moon could be our next home billions of years from now. The Sun's temperature will increase by then, making the Earth's atmosphere uninhabitable. By then, Titan's cool temperatures will be good enough to create stable oceans and sustain life. The robot finally gathers enough electricity to fly away, so you can head home. It'll be nice to have a normal conversation where your voice doesn't sound like an exaggerated cartoon. Whew. In our solar system, most planets spin counterclockwise, but not Venus. This rebel planet decided to spin clockwise, and scientists are still trying to figure out why. By the way, why do planets rotate in general? What defines the speed of their rotation? Does the sun rotate? Buckle up and let's try to answer these questions. Venus is the second planet from the sun and the hottest planet in our solar system. Did you know that Venus is sometimes called Earth's twin? That's because it's similar in size and composition to our own planet. But that's where the similarities end, because Venus is a pretty crazy place, to say the least. For example, the weather. On Venus, it's always hot and cloudy. And when I say hot, I mean it like it's over 800 degrees Fahrenheit there. And those clouds? They're not made of water like the ones on Earth. Instead, they're made of sulfuric acid. So yeah, you wouldn't want to go outside without a really good sunscreen on Venus. If you look at the photos taken from its surface, you can see these toxic yellow clouds and cracked, desolate landscapes. And the spacecraft that captured this turned off almost immediately after sending these photos. Poor fella. But the surface of Venus isn't just some solid, dark, flat land. In fact, Venus has mountains that are taller than Mount Everest. These mountains aren't made of rock like the ones on Earth, though. Instead, they're made of a kind of volcanic material that's denser than... Venus is a pretty creepy place that holds many mysteries. One of them has been puzzling scientists for years. 
and this is the planet's rotation. Most planets in our solar system rotate counterclockwise, but Venus isn't like the other girls. It rotates clockwise, and that's not all. It also rotates around the Sun faster than it rotates around itself. In other words, a year on this planet passes faster than a day. It's almost like Venus made being quirky its life mission. But why is that? Well, scientists have a few theories. The most popular theory says that Venus was actually spinning counterclockwise like the other planets, but then something happened to flip it around. And what could that something be, you ask? A planet-sized object. Yep, astronomers believe that something huge once collided with Venus, causing it to spin in the opposite direction. You can imagine this like a cosmic billiard shot, with this mysterious huge object being the cue ball and Venus being the target ball. But we can't actually say that Venus is spinning the wrong way. There's no such thing as a wrong direction of spin in the universe. This is actually called the retrograde rotation. This is when a planet rotates in the opposite direction to its orbit around the Sun. Venus, for example, has a retrograde rotation, which means that the Sun rises in the west and sets in the east on that planet. So now, when the horoscope says something like Mercury in retrograde, you'll know what it means. Oh, but Venus isn't the only weird one in our solar system. There are definitely some wacky ways that planets can rotate. For example, most planets in our solar system spin around an imaginary line called an axis. This axis is usually straight up and down in relation to the planet's orbit around the Sun. However, some planets like Uranus have a tilted axis, which means it's almost on its side in relation to its orbit. This tilt causes the planet's poles to be nearly in the same place as its orbit. The result? As the planet orbits the Sun, different parts of it receive different amounts of sunlight, causing extreme seasonal variations. For example, one pole might experience continuous sunlight, while the other is in complete darkness for a long time. Uranus is the only planet in our solar system that rotates on its side. Scientists think that it could repeat Venus's history. Once upon a time, a large impact knocked Uranus off its original axis of rotation, causing it to tilt at an angle of 98 degrees. We should be grateful for Jupiter. Its crazy gravity pulls all the asteroids and protects us from such collisions. All this is somewhat similar to tidally locked planets. Imagine going on a date with a planet, but instead of being charming and mysterious like you'd hoped, it's just staring at you with the same face all night long. That's basically what it's like to hang out with a tidally locked planet. Tidally locked planets are planets that rotate around their axis at the same rate that they orbit their star. This means that the same side of the planet always faces the star, while the other side is in permanent darkness. Being tidally locked can have some weird effects on the planet's climate and weather. The side facing the star can become extremely hot, while the other side can be incredibly cold. The atmosphere on the planet can also get pretty wild, with strong winds blowing from the hot side to the cold side. And it doesn't have to be planets only. Our moon also works this way. Did you know that we always see only one side of the moon? That's because it's tidally locked to the Earth. We can also take the dwarf planet Pluto as an example. It has a strange rotational relationship with its largest moon, Charon. They're tidally locked, which means that they always face each other with the same side. As a result, Pluto and Charon appear to waltz around a common center of gravity, creating a unique dance in space. But the oddities of our solar system don't end there. There are also planets with super fast rotations. While most planets rotate at a fairly sedate pace, some of them are sonic levels fast. Jupiter, for example, rotates once every 9 hours and 56 minutes, which means that it has a day that's less than 10 hours long. That's fast enough to cause the planet to bulge out at its equator. And also, this rapid rotation creates strong bands of winds that can reach speeds of up to 400 miles per hour. 
And if all this still seems logical and kinda makes sense, then how about chaotic rotations? Yep, some planets have a rotation that's so irregular and unpredictable that it's known as chaotic rotation. This is often caused by the gravitational influence of nearby moons or other planets. And it's mostly the case with moons and small objects like that. In our solar system, some moons of Pluto, Saturn, and Neptune have chaotic rotation. By the way, the Sun rotates too, just like the planets. However, its rotation is not uniform. The equator rotates faster than the poles. Pretty weird, isn't it? This phenomenon creates a magnetic field that's responsible for phenomena like sunspots and solar flares. But all this raises an interesting topic. Why do planets rotate in the first place? This may sound like a silly question, but can you answer it? The answer might be trickier than you imagine. It all started around 4.5 billion years ago with the formation of our solar system. When it formed, it started as a large cloud of gas and dust. As the cloud began to contract due to its own gravity, it began to spin faster and faster like a spinning top. This spinning motion caused the cloud to flatten into a disk-like shape. As the cloud continued to contract, the center became denser and hotter, eventually forming the sun. Meanwhile, the material in the disk began to clump together and form planets. But because the disk was already spinning, this spinning motion was inherited by the planets as they formed. In other words, the planets rotate by inertia. They inherited the spinning motion of the cloud of gas and dust from which they formed. This is known as the conservation of angular momentum. This is the same principle that causes ice skaters to spin faster when they bring their arms in. And that's a wrap on the wacky world of planet rotations. From the lightning-fast spin of Jupiter to the bizarre backwards rotation of Venus, it's clear that our solar system is full of surprises. But thanks to the laws of physics and the gravitational pull of the Sun, these planets continue to spin on, keeping time with the steady beat of the cosmos. Stay tuned!